Hi there, I'm Paddy Byrne and welcome to another episode of Free Falling Through Canvas Apps. In our last episode, we added some fields to our Opportunity Gallery games. In this episode, we're going to add two more fields. The first field is going to be the status reason. It's, that's dead easy, it's just the same as last time. The second field is going to be the owner field. Now that's a bit more complex. Why? Because it's a polymorphic lookup. That means that it can look up to one or more entity. And the owner field on our opportunity can either be set as a team or a user. So, we're gonna do a few different things. First thing we're gonna do is learn about if statements. And we've not used conditional statements before, so we'll be using an if statement to say, if the data in that field is a user, display the user's name. If it's not a user, display the team name. So then we'll look at another function, the isType function, and that's going to check whether the, the contents of that field is of type user or is of type team. And last, to display the data, we'll use the asType function. And the asType function will say display that data as that type of event, that type of record. So let's have a look at adding these two fields. And once added, they'll help us check that our data is filled correctly. So this list of opportunities is great, but it's all opportunities. And I don't want my sales guys to be bothered about anybody else's, just their own, and just their own open ones. At the end of the day, it's supposed to be an easy opportunities manager. Just try and make it as simple for the sales guys as possible. So, first thing I'm gonna do is rename, relabel this to my open opportunities and we'll just make the font a bit smaller in there. We can do that just in the, the toolbar at the top here. Let's just put it to 24. It's going to have to be smaller than that. <laughs> yeah, a bit too small. Let's just type in 22. 22 looks good. That'll do. To make it easier for us to ensure that we're bringing back the right data, I'm going to add some fields to these to the, to the, to the list items. Now these fields, I'm not going to keep these on here. I'm just going to use them temporarily, make sure I'm bringing the right data, and then I'll remove them. So my open opportunities, that's going to be opportunities where the owner field is equal to me and the status is open. So let's put the status and the owner data on each of the list items. To do that, select somewhere in the list item, click insert and insert a label. And this doesn't, it doesn't really matter how this is formatted because we're just going to get rid of it anyway. Let's put that one there, put another one in there. Make the text a wee bit smaller just so that it's a bit more visible. So quickest way to do this again, like we discussed in the last video, you can change the, the text. And for this one we will do this item dot status. We can see different statuses here in each of our items. We want to populate this field with the owner. Now owner on an opportunity can either be a user or a team. So that's a special type of lookup. It's called a polymorphic lookup. So in order to display the name of the user or team, we have to do a check. We have to check what type of entity it is that we're looking up to. And to do that, we use a function called isType. 
To use the isType function, we first need to add data sets of the other tables that we're going to look up. So in this case, we're going to have to add the team and the user tables to our Canvas app as data sets. To do that, click on the view from the navigation menu, add data sources, click add data source, we'll use our existing common data service data source. We're going to add users. <clears throat> and then we're going to add teams. Oops, sorry, user existing connection, and then add teams. So now we have opportunities, users, and teams in our data sets. Let's amend the text property of that, this field. Now our aim is to say if the related entity is of type user, put the user's name, otherwise put the team name. Now this is the first time we've used if statements, so let's make it really simple for ourselves and just put a basic if statement in it. The if statement is if and the first parameter of the if statement is the logical test. For this example, right now, we're just going to say true. So that will always run. That will always return true, sorry. The second parameter is what happens if it returns true. We're just going to populate the field with the word user. And the last parameter is what happens if it returns false. And we'll just populate it with team. Close that back off. And let's have a, let's change the format of that text. So you can see what happens. True, which will always happen. Show user, otherwise show team. And you can see your text in that field. What we'll do now is replace these parameters with the actual parameters that we want to check on. So a logical test, we're going to use the isType function. So we type isType. The first parameter is the field that we're checking. So that's this item. So our owner. The second parameter is the data set that we want to check to see if that is part of it, which is users in this case. So that says that if this the value of this field is in the users table, the users data set, it's on true, user, display user, it's on for else it turns false, display the word team. So we want to populate our true, so our true scenario, we'll populate the field with the user's full name. And again, to do that, we need to first check the type. We need to say as type. Populating that field, it's almost like putting a cast on it. Populating that field from data that's in the user's data set. And we're using the field name. So that works fine. Teams, for the team one, we should be able to just do an exact copy of this. But that doesn't work. If I show you what happens. Oops, I'm missing a comma there. So 
So if we use the as type function, point it to the same field. And this is where it goes wrong. So I would expect to put in teams there because that's the name of the, the data set. But I can't get any attributes relating to the team entity. What I have to do is use at teams. So I don't know why it's different for users and teams. But it is. And that had me stuck for a while. And I'm missing a bracket there. So I enter. And there you go. That populates with all the owner full name or team name. So, we learned some important concepts there. We use our first conditional statement, that was an if statement. If you're a citizen developer or brand new to development, then check out if statements. Do more detailing because you use them all the time. We also looked at two different functions, the as type function and the is type function. And that's used when dealing with polymorphic lookups. So that's all for me this week. In next week's episode, we'll be filtering our Opportunities app by status reason, which we've got a field in the form for, and by owner, and we'll do it by the current user. And that's why we've added those fields. So once we've got that filler done, those fields will remove them. We've not added much functionality to our app in this episode, but we have covered some key concepts. And I'll see you next week. Bye.